Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone that we are presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is the world's most trusted betting platform and number one source for everything sports betting. Every stat, matchup breakdown, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during games. BetOnline has the largest catalog of odds on everything from football, MLB playoffs, NHL, NBA, and even political props. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or on wine with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online, the game starts here. Load it up, call. This shit feel like game seven. Put lines up through my S's. Wake up in the morning, count my blessings. Welcome back to the Money Now on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you tap in with us. And to start this show off, man, as we're recording right now, today is Mental Health Awareness Day. So I think it's very important for all of us as human beings to, you know, check in on ourselves. You know, first and foremost, I know, you know, plenty of people, we do a lot of stuff for other people, you know, day in and day out. But I think it's hard to, you know, do stuff for others without taking care of yourself first. So, you know, whatever you need to do, whether it's, you know, females, manicure, massage, get your hair done, whatever you like to do to get yourself back in that right mood. Fellas, haircut, go hoop, play the video game. You know, make sure you, you know, stay on top of those things and make sure that you know, you're mentally stable. You know, check in on your friends. I, I always got to give Warren a ton of credit, man. He, you know, every, every few weeks or so, he sends a message in the chat, you know, what can he pray for us with? And I think that's a, a huge thing to always check in on your friends, no matter whether you talk to them daily, you know, once a week or, you know, once every few months to check in on people because you never know. You know, I, I, as I've seen, you know, many people say sometimes, you know, the happiest people are really going through you know, some of the hardest things. So check in on everybody, even if you think they're happy. It's, it's very important. Never know what somebody's going through. So hope everybody, you know, enjoy their day and, you know, just check in on all your families, friends, everybody to make sure everybody's doing all right. Yeah, that's real. And I mean, you know, something I want to talk about is, you know, we always, like you said, you know, we got a group chat where we always talking back and forth. And, you know, that kind of is, you know, my way of escaping, my way of, you know, talking to the people that I truly vibe with. You know what I'm saying? The other the fellas, like we playing video games. That's my mental escape. I know you talked about, you know, haircuts, whatever it is. The video game is that for me. We play the game all together. And man, just appreciate y'all, dog. Like, you know, all us as football players, we all go through a mental space of, you know, blankness at some point, you know, yeah. whether the, the game is cut, you know, you're talking about something we've been doing our whole life, playing football. I've known football since I was five years old. You know what I'm saying? So for me to, you know, play for as long as I did and it, to be taken away, you know, it's going to happen at some point. But you got to have something to be able to get you over that hump because it is a blank in a dark spot. So, you know, fellas out there, athletes out there, no matter if you hooping, you know, women's, women's sports, men's sports, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? I, I encourage all of us to, you know, find our happiness or whatever it is that can make you be happy and uh, and just truly hone in on it, man. Because like James said a little bit earlier, you know, we always are the ones making other people happy, satisfying others, entertaining others. But we also got to take care of ourselves. So whatever it is for you, um, you know, that 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 gets your mental right. Um, man, we encourage it. We encourage it for sure. Yeah. And I agree with the guys, man. Mental health is, is is such an important thing. And, you know, I'm glad that, you know, it's been talked about more often. You know, you have, you know, we have loved ones, we have friends, uh, we have people that we know that, you know, have, um, you know, unfortunately taken their lives due to, you know, poor mental health or excuse me, I don't want to say poor mental health. That's insensitive, but, you know, just, you know, because yeah, battles, yeah, battles, yeah, battling battles, with battles. mental health. Um, and so it's it's important just to, you know, keep in touch with one another, you know, check in on somebody you don't normally check in on because you never know what they're going through. You know, if it's somebody you haven't talked to in a month too much, you know, just check in on somebody, you know, hey, thinking about you, you're on my mind today. You know, I hope everything is going well. It doesn't have to be a long conversation, but just yeah. let people know you're there. Let people know that, you know, you care about them, that you're thinking about them. Um, you know, because it's 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 tough feeling like, you know, you're alone. It feels like you're, you know, it's tough feeling like you're going through whatever it is alone. You're never alone. Um, and there's all, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, I just want to say the grass is always greener on the other side. Whatever it is, you know, whatever type of day you're having, um, there's always going to be high on the other end of the low. So definitely, you know, make sure you're focused on your mental health and, and, and those that know someone that's struggling with their mental health or whatever it may be, make sure you reach out and, and, and just make sure they feel loved. 
100 percent. that's that's real make sure you check in on your people check in on yourself take care of yourself i think that's the the most important thing you now we'll, we'll shift over to some football news i think the hottest topic of the week Ooh. is the other day the robert Salo gets fired you know by the new york jets which i mean it came as a surprise to me it's early on in this football season there's plenty of football you know left to play i know i i think probably a couple pods ago i said it would just seem something a little off between you no know, Aaron Rodgers and head coach. And look, maybe Aaron Rodgers didn't necessarily you know, directly have this effect on him getting fired. But I think this is clear as day. There was you know, there was some some going mis- on, yeah, some some going on, sure. some miscommunication sure. there. And also Nathaniel Hackett as well. He's demoted from his play calling duties, which I mean he was a head coach for the Broncos. There's some issues there as far as the play mm-hmm. calling with Russell Wilson there. Awesome. Now you go to the Jets where you get reunited with Aaron Rodgers and stuff. You know, still isn't flowing right offensively. So I think that's that was the right decision when it came to that as far as switching the play caller. But for Robert Sala to get fired, that's tough for me. And especially for the defensive players, they all seem, you know, pretty shocked that you know, what's going on. Seems like they really rallied behind him. I mean, he seems like he's a good dude, seems like a good coach. Obviously, he knows you no know, defensive schemes extremely well. But that's a shock because this division's still winnable. The playoffs are still available for him. There's still plenty of opportunity real to thing. things, you no know, turn around. So that's a shock, man. I don't know how how y'all feel about it. Does this affect them, you know, going forward? Does you know do they find a way to get things rolling? Because like I said, division is wide open. I don't wide know. Wide open, wide <laughs> open, and then you know they got a key game on what is it Monday night? They play Monday the night. Bills, like the division. I, I want to say for first place in the division. So it's just a little weird, man. I, I didn't understand the move just for the simple fact that what he was brought there for, as far as like what his you know, cup of tea is he's a defensive coach and the defense has been playing lights out. I mean, you're talking about them playing so far solid teams. I think they were to to keep the lowest to the Minnesota Vikings Uh, was in a, was in a, honestly a a battleable game. You take away some of the turnovers that Aaron Rodgers had. I mean, you're talking about maybe a different outcome of a game. I know you threw the pick six and uh, you know, you're not even giving your, your defense a chance to go out there and, you know, get a stop. Uh, So, you know, just, just, I could understand the demotion of, you know, the OC, um, the offense looks kind of bland. If you you know compared to a lot of the offense that we're seeing now, you don't see a lot of motions coming from you know the Jets offense. I you know I know some of that can be because Aaron Rodgers you know wants specific things done. Um, but just crazy to me, right? We're talking about a coach that you know obviously you could say maybe underachieved a little yeah. bit, but at the same time, I mean last year, quarterback goes down with a season-ending injury. This is the yeah. first time he's. He's in the building, you know, for the season and for the whole time. And, of course, we, we all know you're going through a season. You're going to go through adversity. You're going to win some games. You're going to lose some games. You're mm-hmm. gonna, it's going to be, you know, controversy in a locker room or some people not on the same page. Um, but just to take that route, like you said, James, it got to be something a little bit more that we, we don't know about and we probably never find out about because Aaron Rodgers went on Pat McAfee and he said, you know, everything, you know, is a shocking to him, yeah. which – I'm not buying that. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not buying that. Yeah, I don't know about that same, one. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it's it's a, it's a shocker move, man. And we'll see. We'll see how yeah. it affects them, you know, in the long run. I mean, I think when I think of it, you know, obviously, you know, it's a shock, you know, firing Robert Sala. I, I 100% agree with that. I don't think you've, you know, given him a chance, you know, with Aaron Rodgers having his first full year, you know, to see what they can do. Obviously, they had, you know, some stuff going on with the offense, you know, right move to demote Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, you have two elite quarterbacks, you know, Russell being an elite quarterback, now Aaron being an elite quarterback, you can't figure it out. You know, that that makes sense. But the yeah. head coach firing, I think that's tough. I mean, it also, it's also tough. Like, we talk about this all the time. Like, you know, people got to make decisions. You know, front office is nuts get hot, as souls likes to say. I mean, it's it's one of those things. Jets probably tired of, you know, losing every year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, you know, you pick up a friend, you, you get a franchise quarterback a couple years back. Didn't pan out, you know. Franchise quarterback before that didn't, play, didn't pan out. You know, now you got – a great quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback, and it's not panning out right now. Obviously, he went down last season. It's not panning out right now. You know, you 
you gonna you're gonna jump to okay, what move can we make to try to radically shake things up? Because this isn't the way it should be looking with a top tier defense and and an amazing quarterback in our backfield. Like we got the pieces we need. I mean, they do. They have all the pieces. Just got to figure out how to put it together. And whether that be in the locker room and a front office, I think a decision needed to be made. But I don't think it was fire Robert Robert Sala. The team was behind him. You know, I feel like you really throw off team chemistry when you make rash moves like that. So, you know, you could have really ruined the, ruined your season. You never know the growth that you could have had coming out of the decision that he made to switch play callers, any of the other ideas he may have had. You never know what that's going to look like, especially with now having Aaron Rodgers for a full season, right? At least up to this point. So now you throw that out the window. You Now you throw off team chemistry. Everybody's confused. Like, what's going on? Like, you could have really ruined your season at this point. And, and I wanted to say, you know, I think this is a move that if you are going to make it, I think you wait until the bye week or whatever that midpoint is in your season where you can kind of take a week back and assess what's all going on. But I wanted to say this, Warren and James, I think in football culture, we have gotten so spoiled with, you know, Tom Brady leaving New England and going to Tampa Bay and winning a, I want to say, what, year one, right? Yeah, winning, a one. Bowl, yeah. year winning, one. winning a Super mm-hmm. Bowl. Winning a Super Bowl. And then we see, you know, the, the transition that Patrick Mahomes has made as, you know, sitting out a year, but then coming back and now he's on that role of winning Super Bowls that people get like, like even front offices, like you think that you make one big move by bringing in Aaron Rodgers and you think you're supposed to just win. Like, no, it's it is super hard to win in this league, man. Yeah. It's super hard. So I just think when you don't give people the right enough time. And again, I know this is what year three for him. Year four, what yeah, it might yeah, be. Yeah, it's three like or four for year three or four. Man. But you still got to understand when you certain when you make certain moves of getting rid of your you know the quarterback that you drafted in the first round, thinking he was the franchise, and you bring in a quarterback just the the, the level of status that Aaron Rodgers is. You know he's gonna want to change certain things, and it's his way, right? It's his way or the highway. And I just think it's not. I just think it's 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 not fair for for you know Robert. But I mean, like you said, that's how that's how this league is. You got to be able yeah. to. Pick up and move it. Keep it moving. Yeah, I think the owner, Woody Johnson, I think he made a, a rush decision here. I know Perk said some of his friends were in attendance in London. So, my, you know, my dog probably made a, you know, lashed out, just made a, a hurry. Well, he, he was in his chest. He was yeah, in his I mean, chest you, you too already, much. Yeah, you already put the, the coach in a tough spot. You drafted Zach Wilson. I'm sure they probably forced him into that starting role when he definitely didn't need to be in there. Had a behind the eight ball there. They stood no chance on offense putting in a – unprepared rookie to start for a couple seasons and he finally gets Aaron Rodgers he gets hurt last year now he gets thrown in here for a few games you don't even really get to see you know what this team could even be capable of with him as the head coach so I think it's tough I mean I don't I don't like the decision maybe they you know bounce back this season at some point look there's a lot of football left to play I know even Sauce Gardner came out he said you know we're still doing it for Robert Sala so that that tell me it messed up right there if you're you one of your top players, you know, on your team is still saying he's playing for the coach that you just fired. That's that's really strange. So that, that tells me this this firing is definitely out of the blue, and those dudes definitely didn't expect it. We'll see, we'll see how this result for him. I mean, I know I picked this team to win the division, it's still possible. I don't know, man. It's not it's not looking good. But we'll we'll uh-huh. stay within the division here. Talk about the New England Patriots. The the fans are getting what they've been begging for. It's 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 Drake May time, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Gerard, Gerard Mayo announced that Drake May will be starting, you know, from this point on, you know, throughout the year. Again, I, I know I've been saying, you know, Lee Jacoby in there based on, you know, the way this offensive line has been protecting. But I, I, I'll trust Mayo. Mayo's the guy. He's been he's been coaching him, he's been working with him you know, ever since OTAs and training camp and hearing him talk saying you know, he's continued to grow, he's been, continued to improve, and he feels like this is a great spot to put him in to go out there and start. I just hope, you know, first and foremost, I, like I, it's not going to be pretty early on. I don't think, especially this week you playing in Houston, Texas, we have a great pass rush and our offensive line is struggling. So I just hope there is a great plan for him, you know, going forward. Offensive line, look, y'all got to play y'all best game yet. You no, know, I don't care what yeah. you don't look like, you know, the previous weeks, better come with it this week against a good pass rush. Receivers, create a ton of separation, do whatever you can. Offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, we need to draw up a great game plan for him. Don't have him drop back 45 times and all that. Get him moving in in and out of the pocket. Don't just have him as a stationary target the entire time, mixing some QB runs, you know, whatever he may be, just to make the kid comfortable. Because, look, it, it's not going to be easy. Uh, like I said, I, I believe in the kid. I think he's 
plenty of talented. Got to talk to him a few times, you know, being out there at the Patriots training camp. I think he has a, the right head on his shoulders, has the athletic ability and everything. I just hope the plan is set for him and everybody else has to raise their level of play. Whenever you got a rookie quarterback in there, everybody has to turn it up a notch to make the game easier for him. Don't, don't, don't put too much pressure on the kid. And fans, like I said, the get out, don't, don't, hey, don't give him a chance. Just, him a chance. just, just slow it down. Like, let him breathe. Not, let him breathe. Everything not going, he's not going out there throwing 400 yards, 300 yards, probably, you know, right away. It's going to be some, some ups and downs. Just, just let it happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Don't, don't, Every week, be given a Drake May report card. This and that. He missed this throw. Didn't see this guy. It's going to happen. He's going to miss people. He's going to hit some people. Yeah. Going to have some great games. He's going to have some tough games. So, I just hope that everybody's not, you know, thinking this is going to be a, a Superman type of thing where he right. just come in and turn the thing completely around right away. And and for me, you know, I mean, obviously, I don't agree with the decision, but you know, like you said, Mayo's been around the NFL for a very long time. He's seen this kid progress in camp, so he 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 has a, a more in depth uh, view than what anybody else was. And I I also too I kind of want to lean a little bit too of do we think like these front offices are forcing these people and making these decisions? Like you know we kind of just had an mm-hmm. owner make a decision to let yep. a coach go, and I know these owners want to win now. They want to see you know what they got and you know is their first round pick gonna pan out? So maybe this could be a decision that was kind of like hammered by you know mr craft we'll see or we'll know later on but you know like you said with with drake may you know i just hope that you know this o-line can be able to hold up we're talking about a, a defensive team that has a great pass rush head coach is a defensive mastermind in this nfl right mm-hmm. now you know he gonna bring pressure you know he gonna blitz right like mm-hmm. any rookie quarterback you, you throw those different looks and you get after him so you know i just in, interesting to see how this game is gonna go on sunday um, but, you know, hoping all the, you know, all the best for Drake May, right? We understand. We've seen what he got. You know, he's he's a quarterback that's going to have a bright spot in a bright, you know, future in this league. Um, just got to all put it together. So it's time for that that Patriots team to rally around him and, and then go out there and have a complete game. Yeah, I think it. And, James, you know the organization, obviously, more than the both of us do. I think Soge made a good point. Like, you know, could it be that, you know, the front office is, is – is, making some, you know, making them make this change, you know, and it's quite possible, right? Like you talk about, you know, how great the Patriots organization has been over the years. Right. And they're used to seeing that, right. They want to get back to that. You just got a a first round quarterback that, you know, had a really high draft grade, looked very good in college. You know, you want to get them out there. You want to try to get back to the old Patriot way, the winning ways that you've had. Like you're like, some people might be chomping at the bit. They're like, Hey, let's figure out how we get back to this. Let's get Drake some reps. Let's get him into the game to see if we can turn the season around or, you know, start getting him ready to go. Right. So that could quite possibly be the case. Um, do I, do, do I agree with it? Again, I don't. I mean, I think, you know, you got a lot of things you want to figure out. You want to make sure you got the pieces that are right around him. Cause you know, you throw a, a guy like, you throw a guy like Drake Mann or being a, a, a rookie and all that stuff. I'm not saying that he can't flourish or anything like that or change the team. Like anything can happen, right? Yeah. But it's just, you know, it's it's less likely from what we've seen based on like history, right? Like you've got a rookie quarterback coming in, doesn't have the pieces around him, and it doesn't end up panning out the way you want it to. Yeah. So just take ta- all all I say is tailor your, taper your expectations yeah. a little bit and give him a chance to get going first, just to see what you got and what the and the pieces you need around him because you may not have it right now. No, I agree. I mean, it definitely could be be coming up from up top for sure. Um, obviously, the last the three seasons offensively is. It hasn't been great. And great. look, these owners, I mean, some owners, I won't say every owner. I know Kraft, they care. That family cares about you know, what this team looks like week in and week out. And maybe they could just be you know, unsatisfied with what this offense looks like. Like, look, put the guy in there. Maybe maybe that's what we need to give us a little bit of a spark, give us a little bit of an edge. That definitely could be something that may have happened. You know, maybe they had that communication with males. Like, look, man, we're tired of watching the way this offense looks. See if the rookie can go in there and do something. And that's, that's a real thing. It happens in the NFL, those – these owners, they're they're in full control. If they they want something done, it's going it's going to be happen, good. whether whether you like it or not. You know, at the head coach position, so and, definitely wish we go ahead. And I and I want to add this. I mean, too, right? Like we kind of know there was a little bit of friction between Mr. Kraft and Bill, right? And you're talking about a coach that has been winning all these Super Bowls. I'm sure you know Mr. Kraft might have you know came down and, and said some things that he probably wanted changed at the time when Coach Belichick was there. And he ain't had that power when it came to overruling <laughs> yeah. Coach Belichick. But now it is here. You got a rookie head coach 
some of that stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. head man says, says yeah. you know, this is what's yeah. what's going down. It's what you got to do. It. <laughs> it's what's going down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just interesting stuff that, you know, we want fans to take a perspective and think about. Like, it's not always necessarily – Coming from you know a, a place of like ah like I think we should wait a little bit like nah if the, if the head man say something need to change is being changed you know immediately immediately <laughs> immediately and <laughs> hey, we'll we'll switch over to another rookie quarterback in the same class as Drake May Jane Daniels this kid's been off to a hot start man he's, he's been balling he's been doing whatever he can out there every single week you know throwing it running it. You know, in command, the kid looks as confident as ever. They lit up the Browns this past weekend. wasn't even wasn't even close. I mean, he playing like how the Browns wish. You know, Deshaun Watson was going to be out there performing. That's I don't know what's going on with that organization, but that's that's definitely going to get blown up over there. You know, after this season, I I would expect. I mean, I'm not sure they what they'll do with his contract, but you got to give this kid a ton of credit. This will be somebody that Drake May is going to get compared to every single week based off you know how this kid's performing so far. I think for me, it's just this kid just looks cool, calm, collected. Doesn't seem like you know much phases him. It looks just like how he was playing in college. It was like under control, mm-hmm. accurate. He throws he throws one of the best deep passes I've ever seen. He, every That's week, you know, ever since like that Bengals week, he, he just been letting that yeah, joint fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And they've been letting him too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, like, as we said before, shout out to Cliff Kingsbury, you know Dan Cliff. Quinn, those guys. Look, they they hit a home run. Like they yeah. they found their guy. They build a plan around him, and he's executing. And it, it's been fun to watch. He's been breaking all these records. And look, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun matchup. They play they play the Ravens this Sunday, so it's gonna be a similar type quarterback he's going up against, who everybody's comparing him to, you know, Lamar Jackson. So that's gonna be fun. But if he go out here and have a game against this defense and this team, go toe to toe with Lamar them. Yeah, you go. We gonna start MVP. having them talks. We gonna start having them talks for real. All right. All right. <laughs> Nah, and, and like you said, I mean, you you alluded to it. It's a big weekend. And, you know, I know some people that's in that DMV area. You got people from Baltimore, you know, obviously dealing with D.C. And they kind of, you know, talking their little trash and whatnot. But I think it's a, it's a great premier matchup between the quarterbacks. You're talking about two-time MVP versus the newcomer in the league. And I think he presents some problems that maybe Lamar can't even present from just the, you know, and not saying Lamar isn't an accurate passer, but Jay and Daniels is, he, he is, like you said, he's been, <laughs> Letting it fly, he's been putting it on the money. So, you know, I, I'm gonna be interested to see what you're talking about. A, a Ravens team that is known for, you know, no matter, you know, probably a step back in defense this year, but is known for playing, you know, tough nose, hard defense. They're gonna always be in the game, they're gonna always keep things real close and tight. So we'll be able to see how he is uh against the pressure and against a team that was in the AFC championship last year. I think this is a very good uh measuring stick for Jayton Daniels and how everything is gonna go, you know, towards the future of the season. Yeah, I agree with that. And I mean you you said it from the get go, Cliff Kingsbury. I don't know how he do it, but he know how to keep <laughs> oh. you know he know he knows how to play to his quarterback strengths. Like you know, coming out of college, he was doing it there. You know, now make you know getting into the league, using Kyler. You know, yeah. being able to play the history. Yeah, okay. Kyler was going crazy when he yeah. went to the league. And same thing with Jaden Daniels. Like he knows how to keep him protected. He knows how to get him out of the pocket, move the pocket for him because he knows he has a mobile quarterback. He's just quarterback whisperer, man. He's been doing a great job, and I mean, it's been playing to Jaden Daniels' benefit. I mean, I don't know if you could have fell under a better quarterback coach and a better office coordinator uh, that knows how to you know utilize his guys. I mean, he's having a phenomenal rookie year, and like you said. Going Going up against a, a a good Ravens defense, you know, obviously still a step back from uh, what we've seen in the past, but you know, having to go toe to toe with another guy similar uh, similar ability to you has been in the MVP conversation, has been in MVP, so on and so forth. I mean, that's a chance for you to you know come on, bring your A game, and show you better, you know. 100%. And and shout out to Washington's defense, bro. Like you see yeah. it, hey. right? Like yeah. Jaden Daniels got it's to the point where it's like they believe in that building. You feel me, yeah. like. Not yep. even the defense been playing lights out. And I don't yep. even think, you know, you can go to all these other teams in the league and you can point out, like, superstars. You get what I'm saying? And I'm not yep. saying Washington don't have a superstar. I'm about to say that D-line, now. Hey. They got yeah. some superstars. Yeah. No, no, for sure. All right. They always yeah. draft a good D-line. Hey. But outside of that, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. play it together. They got Bobby, they got Bobby yeah. Wagner over there. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> that's your leadership. Yeah. They yeah. playing, that's they playing leadership. great ball. So I hope they can keep it up, man, because – Washington is a team that ain't been good in a minute. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what I'm saying? They're making some noise in the league right now. 
For sure. Any, any other matchups y'all looking forward to this week? I mean, this is supposed to be the matchup that's going on right now. We got 49er Seahawks. It's, it's coming down to the wire. Six-point game. You know, that's a good matchup that we're looking forward to. We got Bucks versus Saints. Division rivalry going on. That's the game. That's Lions-Cowboys. Yeah. That's That should be another decent one. Let's see what else. We got Bengals, Giants. I know they're not – neither one of them performing that well. But, yeah, I think that's – that's really the hottest matches of the week. I think the Commanders yeah. and Ravens really that one. But other than that, I would say that, that I'm Bucks gonna go say, yeah, the Bucks, Bucks say, game. That, that, that's I already hard. know it's on. It's on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's on strike. <laughs> yeah. Mike <laughs> Evans. Yeah, Marshawn. Yeah. yeah. Cause both of them been chilling. So I mean, I ain't been seeing too hey. much from Adam Moore so far this year. But mm. I know he know he's gonna crank up. I like, got yeah, to Mike, Mike Evans yeah. and you know Baker and all that. They've been they've been airing it out some so. Look, I'm I'm looking forward to that one. I, I yeah. know it's gonna get chippy, as as it should. You know, what I mean, I, I love these little these little built in rivals. You don't see it yeah. too much, you no know, football no more. They they keep it a buck every time, every time they face. You yeah. know what I mean? So and I, you, I love division, it. And division <laughs> matchup, so yeah, you got yeah. that on top of it. They both sit in two and three in the division. So I mean, it's a lot on the line. They see each other twice a year. Yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be a good one. I think yeah, this is the one for me. To, this is the one I'm looking forward to too. Yeah, that's, yeah. That I, be. I think this more than I think this more than just like an individual. <laughs> <rivalry. laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, it'll probably never come out what's going on, but bro, I, when it's on site like that. Yeah, somebody must have crossed the line or something. Or <laughs> that's might have said, or might have said something. I don't know that you just can't get back. Obviously, yeah. I mean, I don't know Sean, but you know, I know somebody that I know Mike pretty well, and he big on respect. So I don't know if something was said, but hey, man, is it, I, every time New Orleans and Tampa Bay play, man, I'm circling out on schedule because come on, <laughs> <laughs> they might fight, bro. Yeah, they don't yeah, care about that FedEx slip. <laughs> don't care about that fine. They don't care about no fine. About none of that. It's on site, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with that that Inno and Tampa Bay matchup as the, sure. the one that they key into this week. Yeah, that should, that should be a dope one. We'll turn the page to some college football. The game of the week this week, Ooh. we got Oregon, Ohio State. Ohio right. State. I know this is one we've been kind of looking forward to. This will be Oregon's first probably real test in the Big yeah. Ten, mm-hmm. matching up against O State. This will be O State's first big test okay. too. So yeah. look, I, I'm really looking forward to this one. To me, I like Ohio State. Yeah, um, I like Jeremiah Smith and company, Emeka Abuka. You know those backs, and they're gonna welcome you boys to the Big Ten. I think it'll be a good matchup though, because they they both gonna be battle tested in this one. Based on what college football has looked like this year, I expect it to be a close you football game. You know, one of those one possession, you know, final play of the game type stuff. We'll see if Dylan Gabriel shows up. See if that Oregon defense does. You know, see whether they try and stop that stop the, the run game or the passing game from Ohio State. I'm interested to see which you know which one of those turns up for them. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be as close as we think. I don't think it's going to be close. I think Ohio State going to beat them by at least two. At least two. I mean, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, that's nothing against the nothing against uh, Oregon, nothing against BNI and Eugene, because I've heard the stories. I heard how loud it gets, how hard is how hard it is to win in Eugene. But I just think Ohio State, their defense, bro, is is one of the top in the country. Right. It was like that before the season started. Uh, and, I, and I think it's true. I think there's some truth to it. They got some really good pass rushers on that defensive line. You really ain't got to send five, six. Like, you got two dogs on the edge that can get it done. Um, and then not to mention on the offensive side of the ball, we saw that Oregon's really vulnerable against the run, bro. You, we know what you know what we do in the Big Ten. We run the ball. We establish the and run. You got game. two good backs, and, and you got two good running backs. So, I, bro, I really see, I really see Ohio State being dominant on the run, opening it up for the pass game. You're gonna put too many people in the box, or you're not gonna put enough people in the box. You're either gonna get ran on, or Jeremiah gonna take you up top and embarrass somebody. That's just me. <laughs> but I do think, I do think Oregon's gonna get it. I, you know, they're gonna have some drops to get it going. But I think that. You know, this is going to be Dylan Gabriel's, like, first, like you said, opportunity at a Big Ten game against a big-time program. You know, him coming from the Big 12 at one point, you know, with it being uh, Oklahoma. Like, yeah. this isn't a time – this isn't the, this isn't a conference where you're going to come in and you're going to shoot it out, you know, 50 <laughs> points a game. You know, you have a chance – you have time to to catch up because you're throwing 50 passes a game. Like, nah, they're going to run the ball. They're going to be really methodical with it. going to throw the ball when they need to. And if they're winning on the ground, bro, that time going to drain really quickly. So you're not going to be able to sit back there in the gun and try to catch up ball. You're not going to have enough time. 
And I pose, oh. pose, pose a question for y'all. I mean, Pert dropped it in the chat. You think the travel has any effect on it? Seems like the teams have been affected so far yeah. based on the results. Is it Michigan lost at Washington, traveling across the coast? USC lost against Minnesota, traveling. You know, Washington lost to Rutgers, traveling to the East Coast. So you think Ohio State gets off to a slow start going out to the West Coast? Do you think man. it has any, any effect on them or? I'm gonna let you go, but I'm gonna tell you what I think. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. And I, I mean, you, when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about these programs and these top level teams, they they make sure that that type of stuff is is taken care addressed. of during addressed during the week. Whether that is you know moving practice later or whatever the case may be, like they they're gonna figure out what's the best way to have those guys, um, you know, ready for for you know Saturday. I want to say that game Saturday night. On NBC yeah. so Saturday night, but like to what, what Warren was saying is, you know, for me with Dylan Gabriel, he's been starting extremely slow, and I think you know two guys in here have, that have played Ohio State, you know, right? And you talked about it, Warren, being able to control the clock, running the ball, mm-hmm. but also Ohio State is one of those teams that can control the clock, but can also score at the drop of a dime. So they can mm-hmm. do they can do both. I mean, they can control the clock and then still put up forty one on you, 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 you forty one. In a, in a half, and sometimes you know, put up twenty one points in even one quarter. So I think it's all of how Oregon starts. If they start slow, you're gonna be in for a long, you're gonna be in for a long, yeah. long night, man. I, we gonna see it. I'm looking forward to it. What you got for sure? On? I was gonna say I do disagree a little bit. I do think the time change, like that travel, does affect, uh, just play a lot. It does does play a big factor. I do think that's why you know teams do try to take, go out a day earlier than what they yeah. normally would, or two days normally would, than, they, than they normally would to get used to the time change, right? I just think that for the teams that we've mentioned, like Michigan losing at Washington, Michigan ain't the Michigan we've seen in the past. Like they had, they don't have it all together on offense yet. Defense is a, is really good. They play some good ball, but. Washington played a really good game. I don't think it was the time travel that are the time travel. Wow. <laughs> I don't think it was. The twilight zone. <laughs> I don't know if it was the time zone change that really affected that. Then you talk about USC losing at Minnesota. That's another thing we've seen. Now, USC has been better from a physicality standpoint, playing hard-nosed football, but you go up against a Minnesota team. We know what it's like playing against a team like Minnesota, bro. That's a physical game. Physical. And I just think that – you know, you coming into the Big Ten because they've who did they beat Michigan? No, did they beat Michigan? Who, uh, Minnesota? Minnesota? No, I don't, I don't no, 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 no. I'm talking about USC. Oh, they, uh, no, they Michigan, lost to Michigan. No, they Michigan, lost to Michigan. No, Michigan, Michigan. Oh, that's two things. That's two things I'm thinking of. Like we run the ball heavy and we weigh on you. Like we put our weight on you and we play a physical brand of ball. I just think for USC, not just the time change, but obviously they beat us, right? But we're also not where we used to be. But Minnesota, a team like Minnesota, coming to play a team like Minnesota, playing a team like Michigan, that's going to make sure they run the ball, wear you down. You're not going to be able to catch back up in a throwing game. I just think it's one of those things of you're getting used to the physical game of the Big Ten, and this is what it's going to be week in and week out. That's what I think it is. I think the time change does play a di- – the time zone switch change does play a difference, but not as much of what they're coming into. Yeah. I just don't see how you stop Ohio State. Like – if you're just looking at it, you're talking about a team that can run the ball really effective. You got two solid running backs. Mm-hmm. And then on the outside, I mean, between Jer- between Jeremiah Smith and Buka, and pick your poison. I, I, I just, from a number standpoint, just thinking of yeah. college ball, like, do I double team one dude on the outside? Well, if I double team him, I'm leaving somebody, you know, I'm, I'm leaving somebody one on one with a first round draft pick, or we're talking about one of the best receivers that probably ever come through college football. And then also, if I don't load that box, you got two home run hitters or two guys that can really wear down and, and, and break your defense down in the run game. So I will say that. My bad. Go ahead, James. That's a, you got to get after Will Howard. I mean, that's the, that's the key to the game, that. right? They got He's been up. playing great ball. I know. I know. They got, they got, they got, they got, they got yeah. three really good defense alignment up front, bro. They got uh, Jordan Birch, who's yeah. one of the leading uh, – one of the sack leaders in the country. You got Der- uh, Derek Harmon, Deron Harmon. I can't remember what his name is, but one of the top D tackles in the country, draft prospect. Like, I mean, they have boys up front. And that's – I think the it's – <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. But, you know, if you load the box <laughs> – Back into a little bit more, different. but I mean, like expect. But you're talking about we're talking about um, getting Will Howard uncomfortable. They have the guys to do it. They can't stop the run Definitely. for sure. But if they do have some guys in the ball, you know what I'm saying. You got guys that can get after the cube. So, yeah, and, coach, if you see this, 
if you thinking about running all that cover zero or what, I, I don't do know, it. but yeah. I, I tell do you it. from experience, do that it. ain't it. <laughs> do, it. do not do that, man. Do not do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll switch to another matchup. We got going on the Red River rivalry. We got Texas versus Oklahoma. I know news came out today that you know Quinn Ewers getting his starting job back and a Warren this has been a, a huge topic of discussion for for you. you do you think you think that you know Arch Manning still deserves to be the starting quarterback currently or or Quinn Ewers deserve to get his spot back after these last couple weeks hey man I ain't the decision maker but I mean if you got a hot hand you got a dual three quarterback that could do both and he's Playing good ball right now. I think you. I think you keep. I think you keep them. Yeah. You keep the team chemistry going right now. Because if Quinn Ewers comes in, you get to sputtering. Your offense ain't moving like you wanted to, which is a real possibility. Obviously, you know they were doing some great things when he was starting to begin with. But you know, and, and you know, more likely than not, we see a quarterback come back. Offense gets back to roll and things like that. But I just think you ride the hot hand because you go in and lose to Oklahoma, which is your rivalry game. Then what do you do? Right. And Oklahoma is a very good team. You're going into Oklahoma, which Norman, you're going into Norman, which is a hostile environment for you, Texas. So it's just like I say, I say, I say you should I say you keep you keep Manning. But that's just me. I think you got. I think got to get yours in spot. Yeah, back, got right? to. He, he, I don't. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. He was doing his thing before he got hurt. I think you you give him his opportunity. I think the leash gets a little bit shorter now. You go out there BSing. You know, against Oklahoma in that first half, and stuff ain't looking pretty. We might, we might, we might see a substitution. You know, in that yeah. second half, if things not going right. So, I, 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 you go ahead. I was gonna say, even a two quarterback system. You know, do I something a little that. bit of both. I, I, Don't I, think I, so. I, I, can't do that. Can't do that. Two quarterback. Yeah. Man, that, that ain't, that's can't do rocky that. right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm just just thinking outside the box here. You know, trying to help them out if they listening. That, that's early on in the year. Not not no rivalry game. No rivalry game. Ain't doing that. Ain't nothing. <laughs> and I, I mean, and, and, and we're talking about a game that is a must win for both teams. Yeah, right? obviously, it's not a yeah. must win for. It's not a must win for Texas, but from a rivalry standpoint, it's a must win. Like it, you know, just having somebody that was close to that rivalry. My cousin played for Oklahoma two years ago, and. Uh, it's not in. I don't think the game is in Norman. I think it's in Dallas. Yeah, you know, Dallas, they got like, right? a, like at no, the Cotton Bowl, it's, it's right? So, yeah, cool. so it's a neutral site, and just the, they they kind of got that similar like hate for each other, like kind of how we feel about Minnesota and how other teams feel uh, for you know other opponents that they face. So I, I think right now you have to go with the person that is has experience in this game, um, and you don't want to put. You know, Manning out there and put him in a situation to kill his confidence, right? You you kind of been playing some, I won't say cupcake teams, um, but now you're about to start seeing, you know, the the big dogs. The big dogs are start, start are starting to roll around. You're talking about now getting into your SEC schedule where yeah. you play, you can play Oklahoma this week. If I'm not mistaken, they got Georgia next week. Things are about to get real. So you, you got to put your team in the best situation to be successful. And I think no, Quentin is the he's the right say, only, only thing I say is like. It's, you know, we talk about like you don't want to get a quarterback in there, kill his confidence and things like that. We also talk about a program that reloads every year. You know what I'm saying? Like and I'm not saying that, you know, we talk about like, for example, Ohio State. Right. I don't want to go back in history. I'm not going to. <laughs> but like them boys reload every year. You're not. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But I just I think you ride the hot hand. But that was just me. But I get it. I, I definitely get it. Yeah, no, there's no disrespect to Quinn. Yours. He's elite for sure. You know, but I just I don't want to mess up flow. Maybe he, you work he him back in. Right, he earned his right to get his, his spot back, I, I would yeah. say. Uh, yeah. he, he, ain't done, he ain't did nothing to hurt himself. For you know sure. what I mean? For so sure. give him an opportunity. Just look. Like, you better, you better be peeking over that shoulder, though. Yeah. <laughs> you, come to play. <laughs> you better come to play or else. You know, before we wrap, though, I'd be remiss if we don't talk about the WNBA Finals. The game just wrapped Ooh. up shortly. We had the, the Minnesota Lynx. They, they came back and got him a dub against the New York Liberty. It's a great matchup. If you guys haven't been tuning in to the WNBA playoffs, it's been it's been good. And the NBA fight, the NBA, the WNBA finals got off to a hot start. I mean, the Liberty was up about 10, 11, 12 points with like three or four minutes left in the game. You know, they tricked it off, you know, weren't able to close it out. I mean, they <laughs> they had the opportunities. I mean, Williams, Courtney Williams hit a hit a big shot. We got fouled. You know, they sent it. Brianna Stewart got fouled and two sent it to overtime. You know, we missed a little bit in the ending, but it's it's a great style. I don't know who y'all got winning this, you know, this finals matchup. I, to me, even before this, I I thought the Minnesota Lynx. I thought they they've been playing well. I watched them against 
you know, the, the Connecticut Sun the other night and to see the way Nisha Collier, she's balling. balling. <laughs> she, she, no, she a balling. She, she a hooper. And to as a team, they seem like they just really play together. I know the Liberty got plenty of star power, all the you know, high-powered names and everything. I I just like the way the Lynx have been playing, though. We got a lot of games left before it's a wrap. I think it'd be one of those where it goes down to, you know, the final game to see who decides this one. But I, I like where we started so far. Yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the Liberty. I, you know, I kind of want to see, uh, you know, Brianna Stewart win. I I, I, I saw, I want to say last year, she uh, she put out a statement just about, you know, promising New York that she was going to come with it this series. Because I think the last time they were in the finals, she might have played bad and they came up short. So I'm riding with, with the Liberty. But what a time for sports, right? We got the WNBA finals going on, NFL season kicking off, college football has been crazy. Starting to get into that World Series, you know, that World Series time is a lot of, you know, high power team. October, <laughs> October, October, man. What a, what, a, what a time for sports. If you're a sports fan, you know, I know you, you can sit back and just kind of enjoy it, man. You can come home and you know, watch some good games and, and enjoy your enjoy your week and your weekend. So what a time for what a time for sports right now. Yeah, I'm a I'm a rock with New York too. I, I think I like watching Brianna Stewart play. Uh, really watching. Uh, really like watching Sabrina and Ionescu. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm a rock with New York. I mean, I think that, uh, like Bria said, uh, with uh, Brianna Stewart was saying coming off of last season, like I'm really excited to see them close something out. I just think I think they might be deflated. You lose a game like this, yeah. boy, they ain't hurt. Like they ain't hurt. <laughs> yeah. It'd be hard to recover. Yeah, you got to wait a couple days to get back on that court. You in the crib, pimping like crib too. Sometimes, <laughs> hey, but that's sometimes that knocks some sense yeah, into yeah, you. Motivation sometimes, you know. And again, the game could have went either way. Don't get me wrong, Brianna Stewart uh, knocks down that free throw. That's they game win. over. Yeah, she, you know she, what I'm saying? Yeah, and Percy she, she had an opportunity to make a little layup at the end, a little contested layup. She missed it, so. Look, I hope every game ends like that. That's that's what yeah. you like to see in the NBA Finals. You don't like or in WNBA Finals. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. You want to see those close matchups coming down to the fourth quarter. I think that's what it's all about. It's been a heck of a season for the WNBA. It's only right it ends, you know, like this. It's a great competition. That's a wrap for this Money Now podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Keep liking. Keep subscribing. We appreciate all support. Hey, yes, sir. Let's get to the money. <laughs> <laughs>